Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. France has evacuated more than 16,000 people threatened by wildfires in the southwest, as fires also spread in Spain, Croatia and Greece. Authorities in western France are warning of a heat apocalypse in 15 regions as a heat wave continues to blanket much of Europe. Temperatures could reach record levels in the southwest of the country. In southern Spain, more than 3,200 people fled fires in the Mijas Hills, though later some were able to return. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez here visiting the Extremadura region in western Spain. Portugal's fires are contained for now, but more than 1,000 deaths have been attributed to the heat in Portugal and Spain in recent days. Across the Mediterranean, from Morocco in the west to Crete in the east, thousands of firefighters and many water-bombing aircraft have been deployed. Meanwhile, a minister in charge of government coordination said the UK would learn about how to deal with heat waves over the next 48 hours, as Britain is also on course for its hottest day on record. We don't get months and months of warning that it's coming. Kit Malthouse said there would be disruption on transport networks and people should work from home if possible, and that the rail system was not built to cope with extreme heat. England is under its first ever red warning for extreme heat, meaning even the fit and healthy are at risk of injury or death. There will be disruption on the transport network. Obviously, those operators are concerned to see how the network performs in this kind of heat, and so they're taking sensible precautions that I'm afraid may result in some disruption to travel. And so if that's going to be the case, and you are able to work from home, it may be something that's sensible to consider. President Volodymyr Zelensky has suspended the head of Ukraine's spy agency and the prosecutor general, citing many cases of treason in the two powerful organizations. In a video address, he said more than 60 former employees were now working against Ukraine in Russian-occupied areas. A total of 651 collaboration and treason cases had been opened against law enforcement personnel. The officials, Ivan Bakanov and Irina Venetikova, have not commented. Sudan has reopened a key border crossing with Ethiopia that it closed last month after accusing Ethiopia of executing seven of its soldiers. A statement by the Technical Committee of Sudan's Defense and Security Council said the decision was taken after Sudan and Ethiopia's leaders agreed to solve the problems that erupt at the border areas of the two countries and in return for the goodwill measures shown by the Ethiopian side to prevent the infiltration of armed elements into Sudanese territory. Ghana has confirmed its first two cases of the deadly Marburg virus, a highly infectious disease in the same family as the virus that causes Ebola. It says both patients died recently in hospital in the southern Ashanti region. Their samples came back positive earlier this month and have now been verified by a laboratory in Senegal. Health officials in the West African nation say 98 people are now under quarantine as suspected contact cases. The World Health Organization, which is supporting the country's health authorities, has praised Ghana's swift response. Malaysian authorities say they have seized a container of African elephant tusks, pangolin scales and other animal skulls and bones estimated to be worth 80 million ringgit or 18 million dollars. The Customs Department said in a statement it discovered the contraband hidden behind sawn timber following checks on a ship coming from Africa. This included 6,000 kilograms of elephant tusks, 100 kilograms of pangolin scales, 25 kilograms of rhino horns, and 300 kilograms of animal skulls, bones, and horns. Investigations are ongoing on the importer and shipping agent. Ivory tusks, rhino horns, and pangolin scales are believed to have medicinal properties and are in high demand in the region. And finally, for the first time ever in slacklining, a world championships has taken place in the sport. The event, held in Switzerland, hosted a total of 31 athletes competing in gender-separated disciplines in freestyle highline and together in speed highline. Competitors wowed the crowds with dizzying tricks and spins from the line high above the ground. Louise Lenoble won the women's freestyle event, while Davis Hermes took gold in the men's freestyle. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.